Hey, this is Molly and welcome back to my YouTube channel as I wanted to talk a bit more about the energies of relationships and partnerships in your natal chart. And this is essentially part two to the video I did for you about dating, mating, and relating in your astrology chart as I took you through the energies of your houses in your chart through the lens of relationships. In this video, I'm going to show you the energetic differences between partnerships and connections and marriage because a lot of you had a lot of questions and even some confusion about that. So let me show you what the differences are. So in the seventh house in your chart, this is where we establish connections with other people. These are the partnerships. These are how we do relationships. It can be the energies in ourselves that we don't always see, but we experience in another person through mirroring, through projections, through unconsciousness. The seventh house is also the place of open enemies. And I know that's not a phrase we want to hear, but this is also the people you disagree with, the people that you don't get along with, that you don't connect with, because there can be a big gap in your energies or in your understanding. But once again, they're reflecting something back to you and showing you another area of your own energy to perhaps work with or understand. So the seventh house in terms of relationships is where you are dating, it's where you're seen as a couple, it's where a relationship begins to form. Uh, this is also true in business partnerships where you're connecting with someone to establish a work contract or a business together. How are we gonna do this? How are we going to have our roles? Uh, the seventh house is interested in equality. And how do we share, share the responsibilities? Where's the giving and receiving? What do we do equally to support the business or to support the relationship? So the seventh house is where you're getting to know somebody. You're having conversations. You're really getting into more of who they are and what that means to be together, especially as a couple, being seen together. This is a more public understanding of your energy as a unit. And so you can have long-term partnerships with someone that is an ongoing relationship, whether you live together, whether you live separately. This is how we have ongoing relationships. And that is different than we move up into the 10th house, which is about contracts and where we make official commitments, legal commitments. And so the 10th house is the institution of marriage, where when you get married, a legal person, an officiant, is legally able to change your legal status to one another, to the spouse, to be husband, husband, wife, wife, husband, wife. There's a legal change here. Maybe that includes a name change. Maybe it does not. But there are vows you take, you're making a legal vow, you're understanding the commitments here, and this is what the institution of marriage is about, and institutions are about that 10th house of seriousness, commitments, the long term. And so the 10th house is about marriage because it's looking at how you are making these legal commitments and I'm, I'm laughing at myself, how many times can I say legal? But you get the picture. That's what the 10th house is about, where there's an official change in your status. The 10th house is public status, formal contracts. Uh, this is where, again, you're understanding more of your responsibilities to the union, to each other. And again, maybe that includes a name change, maybe it doesn't. I can affect your taxes, your insurance, other institutions that you're a part of. So the 10th house is the institution of marriage where there are legal formalities, which is different than the 7th house where there can be long-term relationships and maybe there isn't any type of legal agreements involved. Now, the 10th house, 
as we look at it through the lens of the institution of marriage, can also involve prenups, prenuptial agreements, also postnuptial agreements. And those types of agreements would be about your second house, what you own, what you possess, your money, protecting it. Uh, for whatever reasons, the prenuptial agreements are also part of the 10th house energy and being clear on what is yours and what is the partner's. Now, what you own together is the 8th house. The 8th house involves your joint assets, your joint debts, your joint liabilities. Uh, This is where we have mortgages, insurance payments, uh, anything with the bank, financial institutions. Uh, This is the money uh, that you have as a joint entity, as a joint couple. And so that's how the eighth house is involved here when we're looking at marriage. Now, you can also have joint assets with somebody that you live with. Maybe you share a checking account. Maybe you both uh, contribute to the mortgage or the rent. And you're in a long-term partnership, uh, but there isn't the legal backing or the legal part of it if this is a long-term partnership. So the understanding here is in the public status, the official public status, uh, which is different than the seventh house of, again, the the long-term partnerships. And so if you look at it as a relationship begins, you're getting to know each other, you're perhaps exclusive, Um, your relationship is growing, you're getting to know one another. The eighth house is about your vulnerabilities. Uh, This is where you're understanding more of how someone works, the deeper connections, their emotional truths, understanding more of who they are, what their fears are, uh, what they're working through. The eighth house is about intimacy. It's about merging. Again, that joint ownership, merging together, merging your energies and seeing how they work together. And then you go to the ninth house, which is about the bigger perspective on your relationship. Where is this going? Uh, What are our philosophies? This could be, you know, what are your philosophies about raising children? What are your long-term goals? Maybe those are financial goals. Maybe those are life goals. What what do you want to experience in life? And are you on the same page as that? The ninth house connects you to each person's ideologies and their worldviews. And then marriage is about, again, making those legal commitments and the formal contracts around marriage. Now, on that note, uh, the 10th house can also be related to divorce and how the energies are separated and how the divorce proceeds, uh, how the legal arrangements are broken up, essentially, how it's dismantled. And so that's also part of the 10th house is the separation of those legal contracts, the unwinding of it, um, and what that entails. So again, this is where it's very official, mature, responsible adult, and yet the energies progress towards that in the astrological houses. And it can be helpful to understand that in your own chart and what that means for you at a personal level, where your energies are. These energies also show up through the transiting planets. And that is where you can look at a progression of a relationship or the progression of your own growth in a relationship based on those transiting planets moving through these particular houses. So there's clear differences here between the seventh house and the 10th house and how those partnerships are created, formed, and stabilized. I was married. I've been through this rigmarole. Um, You know, there's a lot you learn about marriage and union and partnerships in the 10th house energies. Uh, You learn about your own responsibilities, your commitments, what that means, what that looks like. And you also understand too, you know, well, what do partnerships mean to me? And you can have some higher understandings about who you partner with, why, what do we have in common, where are we going, ninth house, how do we share, Uh, how have we worked through our fears. So there's a lot here 
that can be really interesting to examine and understand in yourself. Uh, Something else that comes to mind, uh, going back to the business partnerships, where you're forming a business partnership with someone, and then this would be the joint assets, debts, uh, the balance sheet of the business, uh, the goals for the business, where it's going, how you want to grow it, what it looks like in the future. And then the 10th house is also, you know, what that looks like in terms of how the business is structured. You know, if it's an LLC, if it's an S-Core, a C-Core, um, if it's a true partnership. And one little anecdotal story here to share with you is that say you have, let's call it person A and person B, and they are in a business partnership. And it's, it's considered legally a partnership. And then person A gets married. They get married to person C. Then it's possible that then person A and C are joint owners. They both ha- they share 50-50 of the business with person B. And so this is where you want to be very clear in your legal contracts and arrangements when you're getting married or divorced or when you're starting a business is that you're looking at who has the legal ownership over the business. What are the shares of the business? How does that look like? I was talking with one of my own business advisors who was telling me this anecdotal story about when this couple, A and C, got divorced, they both were entitled to 50% of the business, which affected partner B, who basically was one person, this is two people. It's like this This can get very interesting, which is why you want to be aware of the legal structure of businesses and how that can uh, work with marriage, for example. So obviously, this is not any kind of advice. I'm just sharing with you that the 10th house has a lot of responsibility and commitments. It's about how things are structured, It's about how businesses are structured, how relationships are structured, what they're agreed upon, and also the consequences and the responsibilities of such. So understand that this is a very fascinating area of study. And as you look at your astrology chart through this lens of relationships, partnerships, connections, You're looking at which planets and which astrological signs you have in these houses that show you what your natural energy is, what you're learning, developing, growing. And if any of these houses are empty, which is normal, it's normal to have empty houses, it means that the energy is stronger through the ruling astrological sign of that house. And then also through the ruling planet of that house and then also through transits. So it gets complicated, but it doesn't mean that an empty house, it doesn't mean you're not going to get married. It doesn't mean you're not going to have partnerships or friendships or anything. It just means the energy trail is different to follow. And it can be as well that when there's an empty house, it's not part of your natural essence. It's not as easy for you. You have to put more work into matters of that house. So I talk about all of this even more in my online course about the astrology of relationships, where we go through 10 different types of relationships and what to look for in your chart, as well as the three things you cannot determine from an astrology chart. There are things you cannot look at a chart and just know. So that's a very important part of establishing relationships and partnerships as well. So I hope that this was insightful. I hope it explained for you the differences between the seventh house and the 10th house, as well as the other energies that are at play here. And please check out my first video on this topic where I went through all the houses and showed you the progression of energy as well. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. And thanks for sharing this video with others who may find it interesting and who may find it valuable as well. 
I'll be back here every Monday and Wednesday for a new podcast episode. And be sure and check out my YouTube playlists where you'll find a ton of topics on understanding your astrology chart, all kinds of free resources to help you dig in and know yourself even more through this awesome modality. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you back here soon.